All right, thank you very much. And right now we're happy to feature very special people who make Notre Dame the unique place that it is. We're proud to welcome two Notre Dame rectors, Margaret Morgan and Katie Patterson. And joining them is Father Pete McCormick, a former rector and chaplain for the Notre Dame men's basketball team. So thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Margaret, I'm going to start with you. Now, I have a son who's an RA, so I know how important <laughs> rectors are here at Notre Dame. Uh, how do you carry out your mission? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think we carry out our mission of living in community and making Notre Dame such a special place by wearing lots of different hats. We do the administrative things. We live in the midst of the community. We work with students through good, through bad. We do team building. We do fun events where they're cheerleader, where they're counselor. And we also make, their, make sure they have a bed that they can sleep in. Right. Well, <laughs> so that's we do a, lots of different fun things. Very important. <laughs> that's and right. Katie, I understand you're relatively new to this role. So yes. what have been some of your favorite experiences that you can share with our audience? Sure. I've just really enjoyed um, getting to know the girls, uh, helping to develop my staff. Uh, Helping to develop my staff, I oversee eight uh, seniors who serve as resident assistants and two graduate students who serve as assistant rectors. And I've enjoyed getting to know them and training them to be leaders in the hall. Um, and then also seeing what creative endeavors the students um, come up with. So for instance, in uh, February, we held LHAP, the Lewis House of Pancakes, and opened up all of our kitchens, served a different breakfast food on every floor. Um, and the girls just had a great time. They were very spirited. It was a lot of energy. And we raised a lot of money for the Food Bank of Northern Indiana. So certainly a lot of responsibility, but a lot of fun too, it sounds yes. like. And Father Pete, you're the director of rector recruiting. Um, what does it take to be a rector at Notre Dame? You know, Katie and Margaret spoke quite a bit about this already in terms of the personality, the demeanor that you need to have. My thing that I always look for when I'm talking with candidates is this. Do they have the capacity to love students? Are they going to be willing to love them in all different types of situations and moments and environments? And if they can do that, most of the things can be taught. Mm -hmm. But it's this real willingness to meet students where they're at and to, and to care for them in that way, to give them a sense of home here at Notre Dame. Uh, which is uh, that's many, in many ways the X factor that we look for. Okay, now it's been a while since my brother was a student here and I was at St. Mary's, so sure. Father Pete, how has this role changed as a rector over time? That's a great question. We've seen this role change in considerable ways, but the focus remains the same. And so the types of people who are coming into the role look a little bit differently. When Notre Dame was an all-male institution and all the priests ran each and every hall, um, it has evolved. Certainly Notre Dame then goes co-ed in the 1970s, and we begin to bring women's religious in to run our halls. And more recently, we've had a number of lay men and women who are uh, passionate about this type of work entering into the rector role. And it's been neat to see uh, this role evolve and to think about the rector community. We have 31 rectors, 29 of which are undergraduate. And there's a variety of priests, brothers, sisters, lay men and women that all come together with the same purpose and focus, which is to continue this extraordinary mission of caring for our students, building these homes, these communities that mean so much to them. Yeah, and you have such an impact on their lives and anybody who wants to jump in here, but how do you stay connected with them because you do form such great friendships after they graduate? Uh, we do it in a variety of different ways. So there's the, the personal relationships where students just send emails or cards mm -hmm. or thank God for social media sometimes, right, mm -hmm. with Facebook and being able to track and know where they're living. Um, as a dorm, we, we have a Howard Hall alumni newsletter that we send out mm -hmm. once every couple months. Just this is what we're doing. This is what we're thinking of. For November, the month of November, our chapel and our liturgy is really important to us. So we send out an email to all of our alums asking if they had prayer intentions, uh, and we pray for them during our masses and during things. So we do things <clears throat> using that listserv, using inviting them back for events, inviting them back. We invited them to watch today um, mm -hmm. as the Howard Hall Ducks are competing right now outside. So yeah, so we do things like that as well as the personal relationships and just tracking and finding out where their lives are. All right, well, thank you yeah. all very much for joining us today. And thank you for all you do for our sons and daughters of Notre Dame. Very thank admirable. You. Thank you. Thanks. And coming up, I'm gonna be talking